Now we've got everything installed. In this video, we'll configure an interface instance to connect to the data archive and the OPC server. An interface instance is essentially a service running under an account of our choosing on a machine. For the rest of this course, when I say the interface, I mean an interface instance. When configured and started up, the interface will make connections to the data archive and to the OPC server and get data flowing. We'll go into more detail here a little bit later in the course. But for now, we're aiming to have a service connecting to the data archive. What do you think we need to configure before it can connect? A mapping. So let's talk about that. We'll configure our interface to run under pyschool slash svc pyint, which is another group managed service account that's been created for us. We need to come over here to the data archive and create our identity. We're calling it svc pyint to match the account name. Then we need to create the mapping to the account. After we've done that, all there is to do is open the ICU on pyint01, create our instance, and tell it to connect to our OPC server and our data archive. Then we'll configure it to run under the svc pyint account, and then we'll run it. Another final step is to enable buffering on the interface. So this will make the interface resistant to interruptions between it and the data archive, and it'll buffer data during a network outage. Then when the network comes back, it'll flow right through again. Sounds easy, right? Let's do it. We're on PySub E01, about to create the mapping for the account that'll run our interface instance. So open up SMT and navigate to security, then identities, users, and groups. The identity that we created for our analysis service is already here. We'll create another one for our interfaces to use. So click on new mapping and then type in svc pyint as the name. So the name doesn't actually need to match the account name, but I like to name these the same as the Windows groups or accounts that they map to. It just makes it easier in the long run. We'll talk more about strategy with mappings later in the class when we talk about user access to the system. Click create on that, then go to mappings and trusts. Create a new mapping and type in our server's account name, pyschool backslash svc pyint with a dollar sign at the end because it's a group managed service account. Check names and we're good. Click the ellipsis next to pyidentity and find our new identity. Then click OK and create. This mapping will map to the identity that we created. It doesn't have any permission right now, but we are going to give it permission later to access the tags that it needs to access. Let's switch to pyint01, and if your ICU isn't already open, you can open it through the start menu. One point here is that unlike system management tools, you need to be on the interface node to run the ICU. So you can connect to data archive from anywhere with system management tools, but to manage an interface, you need to run the ICU on the interface machine itself. We're creating a new interface instance. So click on the interface menu, then create a new interface from bat file. Creating it from a bat file really means create from a template. We could configure one from scratch if we wanted, but most of the settings we need are in the default template. Go to the OPC int underscore read only folder, and you'll find the OPC int read only dot bat underscore new, which is our template. So open that up. This next menu is asking us what data archive we want to configure this interface to connect to. We'll select pySRV01. We only have one choice here. And here we are in the ICU. We're in the general configuration tab. We can see a few things here. So we can see the instance we're currently configuring and select between instances if we have more than one on this machine. We can see some important settings for the instance that we'll talk about in a later lesson and which data archive the interface will connect to. On the left side, there's a whole lot of configuration menus. We're gonna go into a few of these, but the OPC interface is very, very mature. It has a ton of configuration options for different configurations and use cases. Most likely you're not really gonna to touch many of these options outside the ones we go over in this class, but if you're interested in the rest, check out the documentation to PyLive library. We'll, we'll link that uh, in the comments. We're configuring an OPC interface here, but there are actually a ton of different interfaces. Most will have similar configuration options to the OPC interface, except for the interface-specific configuration menu item, 
second from the top. The only thing we need to change here is the name of the OPC server that the interface will connect to. The server's actually on the same machine as the interface in our configuration, so we'll leave it a local host. So generate a list of available server names on our machine, which will list them all in the dropdown, and from the dropdown, we'll choose OPC sample .opcda20 server one In real life, when you're configuring one of these, this is when you talk to your operations people and you'd need to work together to choose the right server to connect to uh, with the right configuration uh, that hosts all the tags you need access to. You will also need to work with them to configure appropriate permissions. If the server is actually on a different machine to the interface, there's a whole lot more steps you need to run through. Uh, we've greatly simplified it here, but the configuration is generally different for every situation. So we're not really going to go into specifics. There's a big, nice article for you to walk through if you need it. So click apply there and then move to the services tab. Click create and we're done. And there you go. We created our interface instance, uh, but we've got a few more steps to go through before it's able to do anything. Step one is switching on buffering. So go to tools and then buffering and click yes. We'd like to configure buffering now and continue and check the box for pi SIV01, indicating that we'd like to buffer data to the server. Click next and don't worry about the error saying security isn't configured. We're gonna deal with that afterwards. Click next and then yes. Our buffer location is gonna be on D drive. Just like everything else, we're separating out our pi related stuff to our operating system on the C drive. So let's change it to D drive buffer. Click next. Next, we get the same security message, but that's fine. We're actually gonna fix that right now for both the interface and the buffer. So exit the wizard. All right, we're gonna make both the buffer and the interface instance run under our svc-py int account now. So there's two steps here. Step one is to give the account permission to control the buffer. So open up computer management, and then go through local uses and groups and into groups and then pi buffering administrators. We need to add the account that's gonna run the buffer here. So add the svc pi int account to the group. Step two is to change the account that runs the services. Open up the Windows services applet and click anywhere and press the letter P for pi and find the pi buffer subsystem. So go right click, properties, then log on, and then write in our PySchool backslash svc pi int account with a blank password. And oh, don't forget the dollar sign at the end. Uh, we're using a blank password here because the domain manages passwords for these accounts. If they actually have passwords, they're just managed by the domain and, and not us. Apply, then okay, and okay, and okay. Then do the same for the interface instance service. Right click and restart the buffer. Then close all ICU and buffer manager windows. Say yes to any save prompts and then run the ICU again. Okay, note that no instance is selected when it starts. So a common mistake here is to create new instances whenever you open up the ICU, don't do that. It's just right here in the drop down. So select that. Note now there's a buffering status on here. Looks like the interface has picked up that we've turned on buffering, but for pi SIV01, that's fantastic. Click the service tab. The ICU has recognized that we've configured buffering and wants to add a dependency so the service will always start after the buffer. Um, how kind of it? <laughs> say, say yes, that's exactly what we want. Here we've got our interface running under our SVC pi int account, like we configured in the services applet and looks pretty good to me. We're gonna run the interface, but before we do, let's start up a scrolling log. Rule one of interface maintenance and configuration, or is this rule two? It's, it's a rule anyway. Whenever you start up the interface, always click on the scrolling log button first so you can see what's going on, otherwise you're running blind. Start the interface. And that's a lot of log messages. Let's scroll up to the top and I'll point out some important ones. 
The first thing an interface prints to the log after starting is its own configuration. This can be really useful, especially if you're on a support call with us. If we scroll down a little, we see the interface successfully connects to the PyData archive, and it's a buffered connection. And we see that with this buffered and one in brackets. Down a bit more, and we see that we're connected to our OPC server successfully, which is good. It's what we want. Then we get errors down the bottom about rejected points, but we haven't configured any points yet, so that's that's fine. All right. So if your log isn't like mine, um, if you've got extra errors, then places to check are the general tab. You should see buffering status is on. If it's not, go back to the buffering part of this video, make sure it's configured. If you see any errors in the part where it's trying to connect to the OPC server, then your OPC server may not be configured correctly in the OPC int menu here. So yours should look like mine. If you see any security errors or warnings that it can't connect to the PyData archive, then it's probably a problem with your mapping or the accounts you're running the interface under. So go back to the mapping configuration section of this video and the services applet configuration section. Other than that, we should be good. We're ready to create some points and get data flowing. And we'll find out if it really, really works.